Milton started as a growl in the Gulf of Mexico and within two days became a terrifying roar, the fastest shift from tropical depression to category five hurricane ever seen there. Two days later, we were at 180 miles per hour winds. That kind of intensification is just uh, uh, extremely rare, if, if not unheard of. It has dropped 50 millibars in 10 hours. That speed uh, leaving seasoned weather watchers speechless. I apologize, this is just horrific. And what's feeding the beast, what fed Hurricane Helene just before it, record ocean heat. This is the global average sea surface temperatures for roughly the last 30 years. But in 2023 and 2024, every month, the heat has surpassed that by a huge margin. And zooming into the Gulf of Mexico, it's more intense. 2024's heat so far, higher than the last decade and a few degrees matter. Small differences in temperature, boom, big differences in amount, the amount of water vapor that's getting uh, put into the atmosphere. And that's, that water vapor is really the fuel of the storm. The other conditions that let Milton rage was a lack of other weather patterns, slower winds, air offering less resistance to the rapidly forming vortex. Watching that build up especially troubling for those in the hurricane's path especially for the area that I grew up in, uh, I feel it's very heavy. And climate scientists link the warm oceans that supercharged Milton to the planet warming effect from burning fossil fuels. It traps energy around the planet close to the surface and warms up our air temperatures. But that also contributes to that heat getting eventually down into the ocean. And as Florida braces for the might of Milton, researchers with world weather attribution are already looking at how much of its scale and ferocity was caused by climate change. That analysis expected within days. Anand Ram, CBC News, Toronto.